The top on the Ford was up, which kept some of the frozen precipitation off them, but it was open air. During the whole trip, Laurel had kept Pearl clutched to her chest inside her coat, inside her dress, wanting to be skin to skin with her. She was afraid the baby would freeze to death, and she wouldn't even know it because she was so numb with cold herself. But Pearl had nursed well her last feeding, and her breath had remained reassuringly humid and warm. Won't be much longer. Laurel held her tongue. This time, Derby added, The crossroads is up ahead. He's only a few miles past that. However, beyond the crossroads, the road narrowed, and the pavement gave way to gravel. The surrounding darkness was unrelieved, except for the faulty headlight that blinked intermittently like a distress signal from a foundering ship. So when Laurel caught a flicker of light out of the corner of her right eye, she first thought it was the headlight reflecting off pellets of blowing sleet. But she squinted through the precipitation and then gave a soft cry of desperate hope. Derby, could that be his place? Where? Up there. I thought I saw a light. He slowed down and looked in the direction she indicated. Gotta be, he muttered. He put the car in low gear and turned onto a dirt track formed by tire treads. The sleet made it look like it had been salted. The Model T ground its way up the incline. At a higher elevation, the north wind was vicious. Howling, it lashed against the car as Derby brought it to a stop. Whatever relief Laurel might have felt evaporated when she saw the dwelling beyond the windshield. It could be described only as a shack. Light seeped through vertical slits in the walls made of weathered lumber. On the south side of the structure, the roof steeply sloped downward and formed an extension that provided cover for stacked firewood. She didn't say anything, and Derby avoided looking at her. He pushed open the driver's door against the fierce wind and climbed out. A fan of light spread onto the ground in front of him as the door to the shack came open. Derby's father was silhouetted, so Laurel couldn't make out his features, but she was heartened by the welcoming tone of his voice as he shouted into the wind, I'd about given up on you. He waved Derby forward. Less enthusiastically, Derby approached his father and shook hands. They exchanged a few words, which Laurel couldn't hear. Derby's father jerked his head backward, then he leaned to one side in order to see around Derby and peered at the car. Derby did a quick about-face, came over to the passenger door, opened it, and motioned Laurel out. Hurry, it's cold. Her legs almost gave out beneath her when she stepped onto the ground. Derby took her elbow and closed the car door. Together they made their way to the open doorway where her father-in-law had stepped aside for them. Derby hustled her inside, then firmly shut the door. The wind continued to roar. Or, Laurel wondered, was the roaring in her ears actually caused by the sudden silence or her weariness and gnawing hunger? All that, she assumed, plus the alarming and humiliating realization that she and Pearl had not been expected. Daddy, this is my wife, Laurel. I'll get the suitcases. With no more ceremony than that, Derby left them. There was little resemblance between Derby and his father, who was half a head shorter and didn't have Derby's lanky build. The crescent of his baldness was so precise it could have been traced from a pattern. The hair around it was wiry and gray and grew straight out from his head like brush bristles. His eyebrows looked like twin caterpillars stuck to his forehead. They assessed each other. She said, Mr. Plummer. Clearing her throat of self-conscious scratchiness, she added, Pleased to meet you. Laurel, he said. Yes, sir. We're kin now, so I expect you ought to drop the sir and call me Irv. She gave him a faint smile, and some of the tension in her chest eased. Pearl squirmed inside her coat, drawing his notice. That the baby? What's its name? Laurel unbuttoned her coat, lifted Pearl out, and transferred her to the crook of her elbow. Her name is Pearl. 